Okay, I think uh, we are complete now, so we can start. Uh, once again, let me first thank you for joining this uh, Capella webinar. I'm Samuel Rocher. I work for OBO and I will be your moderator today. I just want to inform everyone that as we are a lot attending this webinar, your microphone is mute to avoid background noise. And after the talk, we will have a Q&A station. And you can ask your question using the Q&A dedicated windows uh, and we'll answer them after the talk. And before someone asks, Yes, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the Capella YouTube channel as it was usually. Now it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce our speaker, Julien Moran. Julien is the system engineer in charge of the deployment of the MBC activities in support of the City Paris Innovation Project for the space sector. And today, he will enlighten us on the usage of Capella and the preliminary design of the micro launcher on Paul, a pretty appropriate name for this project, as uh, the Envol acronym with the French word for takeoff. I'm glad you were with us today, Julien. And with no further ado, I will give you the floor. Uh, so thank you so very much, Samuel. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, uh, as Samuel said, I'm system engineer. Uh, in charge of uh, deploying Arcadia and Capella on a space project at City Paris, uh, air and uh, space project. Um, yeah, just a, a short warning before the presentation. I have a tendency to speak quite quickly, so put some uh, headphones. I think that the sound quality will be will be far better if you have the opportunity. So uh, this um, yeah this uh, webinar will have three main sections. First, uh, we'll I will present the context, more the company, why you do, why we use MBSC and what is the Envol project. Then there will be a, a much larger section on uh, yeah, the, the several uses that we made of Canberra uh, in the project for different phase for global architecture and then after for more uh, detailed design for subsystem definitions. And then eventually we'll have a little synthesis of feedbacks uh, and also uh, the next steps that we, we want for Capella and Envol. So let's start with this very prosaic question, which is uh, who are City Engineering Group and who are City Paris? Um, yeah, City, City Engineering Group, uh, it's, uh, yeah, City Paris belongs to City Engineering Group, a group that has been created 30 years ago in Spain, uh, a group that uh, provides uh, innovative and technological solutions to help uh, customers. So. Today, this is a group of nearly 2,000 engineers with a large field of expertise in several engineering services, uh, present in five European countries. Uh, so, City is a city engineering group. There is a, a strong part of this activity in the aerospace sector, uh, becoming year after year an important partner for the Airbus Group, especially uh, Airbus Defense Space. So, to extend this activity and benefit the experience gathered in that sector, in the aerospace sector, um, so. Yeah, the city uh, acquired the space department of the French company Bertin Technology two years ago. And so this team, this experience team became, uh, became uh, the, the, the Paris office of city. So city Paris, uh, it's a team of 15 engineers with more than 30 years of experience in the space sector. And um, it's a team that is working through a different space consortium, but also directly for private and public French and European customers. So, uh, yeah, we cover large technical expertise in uh, multi physics modeling and simulation, simulation in aerodynamics, structure, thermal, uh, orbital mechanics, also in system engineering, obviously. And uh, also, uh, we provide consulting uh, services on innovation management and economic analysis. And uh, we cover the whole space system from need identification to operation. So that will be important since uh, this drives a little our choice to of uh, Arcadia as an MBC tool. So the phase that we'll discuss today, Envol, it's a phase B and it's obviously a micro launcher design. So uh, yeah, the question is why why do we want it to deploy MBC and project and how how did we how did we do that? Um, so first, why? Um, yeah, 
we obviously want always to improve our tools or method. And uh, during long time, we have used a value analysis process uh, with a document-centric approach for innovation activities. But like has become as project has become more and more complex, it reveals harder and harder to yeah, to, to use that document-centric approach. So we wanted to know if there are more appropriate tools on the market. And three years ago, we started uh, thinking and, and uh, deploying uh, MBSE. So for the choice of the tool, for the choice of Arcadia, uh, there are four main assets that we are looking for. The first one is to have, and this is what MBSC is for, uh, a building tool like an architect plan. Uh, what we wanted to do is to be able to communicate easily on the projects that we were performing in uh, to several stakeholders. And we also need to have um, like a fractal view, a granular, we have to, to be able to manage granularity, uh, being able to go deeper and deeper while conserving consistency uh, after a cre creativity co-engineering session. That was very important. Then there is a, a second argument that was uh, the fact that we wanted to be able to compare to compare several design choices. Um, and yeah, this is all the more important since at the beginning we wanted to deploy Arcadia the phase A, meaning uh, feasibility studies, studies. Uh, and that's how we're beginning. As I said, Envol will be a phase B project. So, uh, yeah, we, we had a little turn on that. I will explain it later. Um, yeah, second aspect wanted to keep track, keep track of decision, keep track of justification, keep track also of the impact of one decision to the whole system between, yeah, system, concepts, the system, requirements, and also, uh, for instance, simulation results. And um, third, I, third uh, asset that we wanted is the fact to be able to have yeah, a tool that can easily be uh, reactivated after a long period. If there is a, a yeah, like we are, we're targeting uh, to use it on very innovative projects, there, there are some times where uh, they can stop for like months or years. And so uh, we wanted it to be easily reactivated after a long, a long break and eventually uh, obviously, uh, making people more productive, uh, better data, documentation management, automation of tasks. Uh, yeah, that was the four uh, main assets that we are looking for. So, why do we choose Capella for for ABC or for MBSC? The first fact is, as I said, uh, we are looking at that for, for a tool that can cover uh, several life cycle of a project, and so. Uh, yeah, what was very important for us is to have uh, the, the Arcadia perspective, the four Arcadia perspective, that they really fit with our need on that. Uh, the fact that it was also an uh, open tool solution was driver because we hope to be able to customize the tool and to couple Capella with our own software, it's a bit necessary. Uh, yeah, last, last, last but not least, uh, we have some clients and some partners that have also tested it. So yeah, that, that was an argument, maybe not the, the best one, but that was an argument. So, how did we uh, do to, to adopt Capella at City? Uh, first, to, first we, we made some, uh, uh, we worked on some feasibility studies on some phase A projects. And uh, our first ambition was to see whether we can match our former processes and especially the value analysis processes that we're deploying with the Arcadia language and the Arcadia methodology. Um, so yeah, we tested it on uh, several uh, several uh, case studies, and for instance, this one, which is an uh, insider. Insider, it's uh, it's a net inflatable uh, that is used for space debris deorbitation. And so yeah, we we match as much as possible value analysis concept with the the, the Capella view diagrams, like in Arcadia and also Arcadia language. So, like we're talking about life cycle analysis, we're talking about transversal functional analysis, uh, creative. Uh, how do we we make a brainstorming in uh, in, uh, in Capella? Those kind of thing. So, yeah, it was a kind of for us. It was uh, good enough to 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 pursue. It was even very good uh, because yeah, the fact that uh, the concept they were present in Arcadia and also that all the data they were interconnected. Uh, in, in, our, in our models, that was a very, very interesting thing. So we then deployed it on a proposal and customer project like this feasibility for the CNES. Uh, it's called the Space Blower. It's um, 
It's a just-in-time collision avoidance a system, meaning that uh, it is uh, meant to avoid uh, a collision between two debris by uh, breaking it with, uh, with uh, a cloud of particles. So not only the ejector, but also the whole reactive system uh, of, uh, of deployment uh, that needs to be, uh, uh, the mission is to be performed in, uh, in 30 hours. And uh, so uh, all of that has been, uh, has been uh, modeled in Capella. And uh, so this work that has made us understand more correctly both the benefits and also the limits of the, of the Capella and the LBSC approach. And the first limit we saw on that, it was, it was very difficult for us to evaluate alternatives, alternative design. So yeah, we guess that maybe uh, for feasibility studies and phase A where the, the system design is not at all um, conceived, uh, it can have uh, maybe, uh, yeah, it can, we cannot as much as we wanted grasp the fruits of Capella. And so we decided also to, to go to, to maybe a phase more detailed uh, project, more advanced project on phase B project. So is uh, such as the Envol project. So I, I will do quick on, uh, on the Envol. Uh, at City Paris, Capella is widely adopted, so we can now deploy it in Envol. Uh, Envol, yeah, where, where does it start? It starts with the fact that uh, satellites, satellites around the Earth, they are more and more standardized and they are more and more miniaturized. There is also the fact that uh, uh, satellite operators now they want to use uh, constellations, constellations for Earth observation, but also for the internet, thanks to, may think about uh, Elon Musk, for instance. And so, there are those tendencies that are spreading in, in space development. So there are new services that uh, that are emerging from the from those technological improvements. A satellite operators know what he wants. It's a higher launch rate for his satellite. He wants more flexibility because he wants to be, for instance, re to 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 be reactive to refurbish the constellation. If you break satellite on your constellation, you want to 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 uh, be reactive, to, to be reactive, to, to send it the one, uh, to, to, to win place, to refurbish your constellation. And um, using uh, big, big rockets, uh, so use Falcon, it's generate a lot of constraints for small payloads operators, because they are always not the biggest rocket on the fairing. They are always secondary payloads. So often they do not choose the day, they do not really choose the orbit of the launch. So there are lots of, innovative space launch company that are trying to develop cheaper, more frequent, more flexible way to reach the space for the small satellites, for the, this market share. Um, there's been numerous initiatives that has been taken in America, but also in China. And in Europe, City Paris sits at the front of those new trends with development of tools to improve and optimize the design of picture of the, of the work sign of the vehicle, design with the nest, and there was also studies of new concept of the operation that we've performed since the, the Altair project, uh, where we studied the possibility to, to launch it uh, from, a, to launch uh, small, small rockets from, uh, from drone. And um, in the, so, so in the scope of uh, the Horizon H2020 program, there have been several projects that were funded by the European Commission regarding uh, European independent access to space and also making a competitive uh, small launcher. In parallel, there has been work and studies on hybrid technologies and demonstrators of uh, hybrid technology. Hybrid technology is a mix of solid propellant and a liquid propellant, so you can bring energy to your rocket with uh, not a two liquids, but a solid and a liquid. So it offers several advantages. It's easy to operate, it's easy to control, it's reliable and it's green. And it has been tested on Sunday Rocket, for instance. So there has been a, a consortium of nine companies with expertise to turn that technology into a full system that has been uh, set to create a micro -insure. So the consortium, it has also the, the business trade to, to yeah, as I say, to, to, to turn this, uh, this technology to a, a, an operational uh, launcher. Um, the output of the project will be demonstrator, but uh, this will be one of the, of the, of the outputs, obviously, then the, there will be an industrial phase on, uh, for this launcher. So NAMO, uh, an Orion company, it's uh, the coordinator in charge both of the propulsion system and the concept of operation. And then there is a large panel of, uh, of external partners 
Some of them already using uh, MBSC, such as a GTD, uh, GTD system, uh, system of information, uh, which don't do the half unique of the, of the launcher. Um, and City Paris, in that, in City Paris, we are in charge of the launch vehicle design and optimization. And we are also in charge of the system engineering activities. Uh, and that is obviously for that that we used, uh, that we used and we deployed Capella in our lab. Um, so, yeah, we are, there has been like two main expectations that we had for Capella and Angol at the beginning of the project. Before even starting the project, the two main uh, way we want Capella to support the project. The first one is to have a support for creativity. Uh, the Angol rocket, it's a new rocket. So, a minimal amount of component of the shelf and a design that has to be has to stay flexible and customized and also to be the most optimized as possible. So what we did, what we needed it was tracking, tracking of design hypothesis, need also to, to easily perform the future backward steps. So that were like a usual creativity process, how to, how to, um, yeah, how to manage uh, the, those, uh, those steps. And also we have to, to, we need to have a view of what is the crucial path? What is the critical path, technological critical path and the level of priorities also. So we do not really, we did not only need a, a bibliography, we need really a map that can help us to, to, with information on this that can help us to navigate through the system. So this is more for the creativity part. And then we also need a, a tool that help us to have the prosaic engineering system engineering activities. Uh, which are mainly uh, requirement creation, recreation, technical requirement management, and control. But yeah, in, the, in the second time, maybe. So, Envel, as I said, is a phase B project, meaning that it's we we only aim for the for preliminary design. But we have an industrial perspective, and also we 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 go on on phase C to some aspect. So, uh, yeah, we we. We define our system engineering approach thanks to the ECSS, which are the space standard from the ASA. Um, and uh, yeah, every time uh, for for all the, the expected uh, outputs of those phases of these phases of this phase B, we have this question: It's can we use Capella on that? So the, uh, the answer was always yes. But how far can we use Capella on that? That was uh, what we wanted: is to use it. As, as maximum, so we can have the more advantage possible to, 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 to benefit from the investment at the beginning to make the model. So there's been those two uh, support that we expected, the beginning uh, support of creativity and then support for system engineering activities. And that was all the more interesting since uh, it, uh, yeah, it's consistent with the phases of the Envol project. The Envol project is three year and there are three main phases. The first one is use uh, existing design as much as possible and also provide new ideas, new hypothesis, uh, and define a global design. So after this first phase, there have been around 40 system, subsystems that were identified that are now uh, defining and that are now being uh, yeah, designed. Uh, four of those subsystems will like to demonstrate and this is seen at the end since so all of them will be, will be created. But what was also what was interesting is the part is uh, the fact that those phases they are overlapping, but also that they are very heter heterogeneous, meaning that some subsystem they are simple component of the shelf, the others they are they are they have to be detailed enough to be used as demonstrators. So uh, we are very in a, a very heterogeneous uh, situation regarding the design of a system. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, I will go uh, phase by phase. The first, it's a global design phase. How do we use Capella in this phase? Um, so, this the, the first phase, the global design phase, there are four main outputs and that we will see uh, match a little with, uh, with Arcadia perspective. The outputs that are market assessment, high level requirements, concept of operation, and a preliminary vehicle design loop. Um, so that is interesting since in, it's match, it match a little uh, operational analysis, system needs analysis, logical architecture, and uh, and physical architecture, which are the four perspectives of uh, of Arcadia. 
Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the main engineering challenge that we have here is that we have those four perspectives, but they are not made chronologically. They are not made step by step. It's like several partners that do the work in parallel, of course, uh, communicating one to another. But, um, but uh, yeah, all the work uh, is done in parallel. And so, um, yeah, more than the, the capital Act tool uh, here, it was more the Hakadia methodology that was uh, useful and that has also uh, to be customized for, for need. So, since in the, the, in the way Arcadia is, is defined, this is a yeah, very step-by-step -step approach. You start with chronological analysis, then you use the results of your first layer to go to the second layer, to the system needs analysis. And yeah, in the capital tool, there is also uh, data specs. In for instance, you can transition uh, from uh, upper, upper perspective to lower perspective. You can transition from a logical architecture to physical architecture, but not, not the other side. But actually, uh, I just said it, it was uh, what I just said is that we can't really have that uh, that uh, chronological steps since uh, since actually all the, the works were performed at the same time. Um, yeah, this was a, a the, to do it uh, well was a luxury that we could not effort not to do it well, but to do it uh, the way uh, the, the way it is uh, written in, uh, in books in a sense. So. Um, a major part of a major part of the, the system engineers that worked on that uh, project, it was to be a, a pivot. It was uh, to match Arcadia concept with all the inputs that are furnished by the partner, and then to to complete them to to deploy Arcadia uh, a posteriori, in order to to be able to review critically all the inputs that were that were given. And um, so there has been a quite important model that has built this way. And so, however, what we saw uh, is that there was one perspective in Arcadia that was not really well fitted for this approach. It was the logical architecture. Um, yeah, actually, the, the inputs of uh, subsystem design they were more often given in a, in a, with concepts uh, related to physical architecture. So there there are very few inputs that we received that really match fit with uh, logical architecture. So. Yeah, we, we envisioned the solution to not to make any uh, any logical architecture, but uh, there are two main reasons why we we created it. Uh, we created one in parallel. It was because first, uh, it was important for us to have uh, a clear functional analysis of all subsystem, and we thought that uh, the logical architecture was the best perspective to to do so. To do so, and the second one is because we wanted to have uh, yeah, impact of uh, system analysis and of operational analysis concept to physical architecture. And so for that, we have to, to have the complete system. So we recreate the whole uh, logical architecture in parallel. Um, so we created this consistent model. It was a, a huge investment, um, but even at that time, it was, uh, it was useful for this phase for, yeah, it was a uh, why it was cool. As I said, first Arcadia helped us to 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 review critically all the inputs and to sometimes complete complete them. But yeah, there is also some features that are more related to the Capella tool and that help us a lot during this phase. So yeah, the first one is actually just the tool itself, having a reference architecture global model that ensure consistency and synchronization between the different view. It was uh, yeah, it's it's a must have now. Uh, I think. So, to, to use this asset of consensus the most as possible, we, we create a lot of uh, very high level diagrams, very global view that are not very readable, uh, that we don't project uh, uh, in the co engineering session, but uh, that we use more for, for STEM engineers to analyze the, the, the system in, as, a, as a global system. So, our uh, main uh, feedback here is the way we use it, we, we use it for as support for co engineering session. But it was more at the beginning rather than um, rather than during the engineering session. Actually, we didn't really find a way to to do it in live. Uh, maybe this can be a topic for discussion after after the webinar. It's uh, uh, if your partners uh, don't really know Capella concepts, uh, is it possible still to to use Capella as a support during the engineering session? 
for us, we used it at the beginning and also at the end to, to agree on a, on a definitive design. And also then, uh, then for, for making a, a posteriori analysis, uh, yeah, seeing uh, how the new design has changed interfaces as uh, is matching with, with the requirements. Um, so, uh, so um, yeah, the output at this phase uh, was mainly a uh, product burden structure. And uh, there is also one asset of Capella that was very interesting for us. It's not really, uh, it's totally independent from uh, Arcadia methodology. It's really on the Capella tool. It's the fact that in Capella, there are some fillers embedded. Uh, and we found that it was very uh, a useful tool for management of the model itself, more than the system for the model. Uh, yeah, we have an extended use of notes and diagrams of uh, the management tab also, uh, which is a, a way to, to, to put information uh, on the, the state of the, of the, of the design and the state of the model. So, yeah, Capella as a way to manage information flux in a structured way was uh, very helpful for this first uh, creativity design, design phase. So, to do, to do that, uh, the means that we have deployed uh, three main stakeholders. The first is a Capella leader from CT in charge of the modelization. Uh, yeah, we have chosen not to separate the modeling from other technical responsibilities on the system design. We wanted to have a space engineer that knows Arcadia uh, and not uh, in one side a space engineer and in the second side uh, a system engineer. So, yeah, we, we could afford that since we have several engineers that can do that uh, in, uh, in our office. Then uh, the second stakeholder is a Capella team. They are city engineers that work on the project and on the project that are able to edit the model that they can contribute to the part they are working on. Um, and so they have been trained on how to use the model for their use, but they do not mandatorily spend time to, to to understand the whole Arcadia's perspective. They know what they want to do in order to do their, their job uh, in, the, in the best way possible. And to synchronize the Capella team, we use the, the, the Git embedded tool of, of Capella. And then there are the external partners. They cannot, uh, they cannot edit the model, they cannot interact, uh, they can only interact through the, the filter of a city engineer because we want it to be absolutely sure to to keep the, consi the consistency of the model. Um, so, yeah, it creates a, a need for us. It's a need to uh, be able to communicate on that and especially to create outputs from the model that can be readable by our external partners. Okay, so for this first phase, um, that was our use of Capella. It was like straightforward, straightforward, straightforward use, which was mainly uh, using as a, the, using the MBSC methodology in order to, to, to have this reference architecture and to use it uh, the best possible. But for the second phase, which was more about once the, the design is at this uh, early stage, starting to go deeper on the conception of subsystems, um, yeah, it was, I would say that the, the first stage, of what, the first phase, there was a huge investment and now uh, there are lots of benefits on the, for, for, from the use of Capella. So the model, it was around uh, 400 components, like a medium, medium level model, very heterogeneous, such as, such as I said. Um, yeah, what we wanted absolutely is to keep the high, high level view. So we did not go into detail for all the subsystems. Um, and for the, the, as I said, there are 35 subsystems that were identified and uh, there are Three main points, three main points on which uh, we use Capella to, to to define and to to design those subsystems: requirement engineering uh, at subsystem level, interface engineering, identification of interface, uh, specification of interface, and uh, eventually I will not talk about that in this webinar, but also budget allocation and repartition. I will not at least I will not talk about that, but yeah, we mainly use a property value tool. Uh, property value uh, management extensively to, to, to perform those tasks. So, 
Yeah, for, for the first, uh, the first use of Capella in this phase, it was for recommend engineering. The most important thing for us is to, to produce outputs that are readable by all partners. Because, yeah, if not, you, you, you just can't communicate on that and you lose all, all the benefits of, uh, of your approach. So, thanks to M2Doc, developed by, by Obeo, uh, by Obeo um, yeah, we can project uh, parts of Capella model in the word template that will not only display the diagram, but also uh, arrays, a list of elements that can be structured as we wanted. So, yeah, we made a lot of, uh, of uh, queries, such as a list, all the, all the elements related to one component, uh, include also those that uh, uh, apply to its parent elements. So we made a lot of, uh, of uh, very specific queries and uh, to, to generate word templates. Mm, so uh, actually the fact that for, for, for 35 subsystems having one harmonized approach to generate a template, that was a, a huge, huge uh, gain of time. So the, the automation of uh, this documentation generable, yeah, it was one of the main, I think, benefits of this phase of the use of Capella. So for the recommend engineering, we, yeah, we, in a sense, standardized the, the templates that we were generating. The templates, they are, they are standardized in a way, but uh, we have the same structure for, for all the, the the technical requirement specification documents. Uh, why? Because we know that the approach uh, that uh, we make, this is the, the one that we had uh, when we use value analysis process, and we know that it is uh, an exhaustive, uh, an exhaustive uh, process. So it's mainly uh, life cycle analysis, external actor identification, and then a, transfer, and a transversal functional analysis. So we use a lot uh, yeah, modern state machine, functional chains, and uh, yeah, obviously uh, diagrams of uh, of uh, physical architecture diagrams. Um, and so this, uh, yeah, we have made those experiments at the on our, our early phase of use of Capella. We know that uh, with uh, like those three diagrams, we have everything that we wanted, and we we can generate all the requirements that we want. Um, yeah, that is also uh, a little feedback on this. Is that uh, the holy grail for us for the for M2 Doc? It will uh, it will be able to have a tool to to reverse it, like uh, send a, a word document that is already structured and be able to to automatically import this document in the model, or yeah, to generate from Capella uh, the M2 Doc template. Of the M2Doc uh, document, and then you can be able to to import and export this document. Yeah, it could be uh, something for us that uh, uh, a huge amelioration. It's kind of a wish list for Hobby. Um, there is also a second, uh, yeah, a second aspect of uh, what I use. It was for interface identification and definition. So, yeah, in our project, it was. There are two interfaces that are very crucial. There's are the one with our customers, with the payload, and the second with uh, uh, an important stakeholder, which is uh, the spaceports, the launch site. So, main important step for, for this uh, interface, uh, interface management is, uh, first of all, the identification. And actually, yeah, that is one of the, the, the uh, one of the main uh, capability of, of the Capellites to easily use uh, and identify the, the, the interface for physical lays, for physical exchange. There are also a lot of, uh, of uh, feature to automatically uh, generate one from the other, to generate a functional exchange from physical link, more on the other sense, actually more create physical link from functional exchange. So there are lots of uh, automation on that, that help us to be more predictive, obviously. And uh, so for identification and specification, it was kind of the same procedure as for specification of the system. But um, we also are trying on the interface that are designed uh, on city office um, to, to, to make uh, Capella a little more than uh, just a library. We, we also wanted to, to use Capella as a tool for the design, not only for the identification. So we use extensively the once again the ECSS standard on this topic because they, they give a lot of uh, approach, a lot of uh, a way to to 
to, to structure uh, your interface, to, to standardize your interface. And so with the, the combination of this standard and the property value tool management, um, yeah, we, we have performed some, some parts of, uh, of uh, interface design in Capella, but uh, what we, we saw it was it can not always, it is often not very complete. So we are still experimenting on that and that can be also a topic of discussion for, for, for after the webinar, how Capella can add value on, uh, on interface design. That could be yeah, an interesting topic. So, um, yeah, in first phase on the global system design, we use Capella for this support of creativity. For the subsystem specification, we also use, use Capella. So Capella was present in like all phases of our vol. What are our main feedbacks on, on its use? So if we compare our, our results and our experience with the expectation that we had uh, at first, yeah, we can say that it is globally uh, positive with one exception, uh, the fact that uh, we could not, um, we, we didn't find it as exploratory as, as we wanted. It was for us very difficult to, to, to create alternatives in Capella uh, to compare different design. This is something that uh, yeah, we are still working on that and we think that it's for the moment a little limited. So maybe that can be a subject also for after the webinar. Um, there are four other main points that we want that I want to, to emphasize on. The first one that it's a fact that Capella is a global tool, and uh, as I said, it, it helps us for the two first phase of Envol. It will it will help us for the third, and uh, yeah, that is something that for us was uh, very important. That avoids us a lot of transition, uh, a lot of uh, uh, change of uh, a change between between tools. Or backtrack a backtrack step so yeah that was something very positive on, on the use of capella for that the second uh, point that is very important for us is the fact that the transition between document centric approach and arcadia and capella uh, yeah it was made simpler but the fact that at the beginning we spent some time to uh, clearly see the matching between our previous uh, approaches and Arcadia. And I think that this work is something that has made um, the team to adopt uh, Capella and Arcadia very, very, uh, very, very quickly. Um, third point is the fact that, uh, yeah, just the productivity uh, of the employees that are using Capella that has been raised, at least in the number of documents generated. We can see that because we are producing more uh, information we are producing more documentation. That's not actually the best uh, key point of the KPI. Um, it could be interesting to have like maybe a, a deeper study on, uh, on the use of Capella for, for productivity and yeah, the, the exact role of automation. But for us, we know that we produce more information. Yeah, the question is that, uh, is it the best KPI to, to evaluate our idea? But yeah, for us, it was important. Uh, the last point that uh, yeah, we wanted to discuss, uh, which is very important in our in our in our mind, is the fact that um, yeah, for uh, using Capella Capella well, um, yeah, th this is kind of complicated because this is a huge investment at the beginning, and that can produce only benefits in the in the second step, and those benefits are correlated with the quality of the work of the first phase, but during the first phase, you can't really see uh, uh, the benefits out of it. So we think that for deploying Capella uh, on an organization, there is some, someone that has to overlook the whole process. We have to have uh, uh, yeah, someone to, to, to keep the consistency, to keep the approach, because uh, if not, uh, it's like difficult, but there is this guy and there is also uh, other engineers that are what we can call on the ground engineer that are the one that will bring information on the model. So uh, more than having one Capella champion, it's important to have uh, a team, to have several engineers that do not maybe know Arcadia extensively. They maybe not know all the features of Capella, but they know 
where to put the information, how to get the information. And actually, it's a part of the job of the, the, the steam engineer in charge of modelization is to make sure that uh, it is on the benefit of every engineer of its organization, like having a, an army instead of a, of a long night, to be a little, uh, a little literal. So, on our side, on uh, Envol and also on City Paris, the next uh, phase and the next step that we will undertake, the first one is uh, to extend the work we are currently performing on uh, the next phases of Envol and especially the demonstrators. Uh, yes, we will extend this study on the new life cycles, so it will be a, a huge challenge. Um, then uh, there will be a new new problematic also that will be the fact that we are creating uh, a launcher, but while creating the launcher, we already have in mind uh, a second version. And so, uh, yeah, that is uh, one of the, the we, we are currently working on what is the, the, the best use that we can make Capella for, for, this, uh, for this problematic. Uh, how can we use the model that huge model, that model that we that we are detailing to uh, yeah as a support for for this new version and then uh, eventually a next ambition is to integrate our CDR our tools with Capella uh, our tools on modelization our tools on simulation our tools on optimization obviously uh, yeah how to how do we um, interface the model and the results that it can produce. So, so that's our, our, our ambition. Thank you all very much for, for, for listening. I hope it has been interesting. Um, just one, um, one short remark for the question. I will not be able to provide a lot of details on the technical aspect of the launcher, of the launch vehicle since uh, a lot of them will become public soon, but for the moment, uh, a lot of this work is uh, confidential. Uh, but uh, I, will, uh, I will gladly ask uh, any question on uh, any other question uh, on Oval and also on, uh, on uh, our Capella deployment on, uh, on, this, uh, on this topic. Okay, thank you, Julien. Thanks for your presentation and for sharing stuff on of your insight with us and, and indeed it's time to see if we have some questions uh we have two questions on the chat um i will ask them in, in a minute but just uh, i will remind to the attendees that there is a specific q and a session i think it will be much more easy for me to to find the question if they use the specific window anyway uh so first question uh, was there a widespread use of Capella model querying? And if so, how was this managed on a large scale? So, I'm sorry, but I don't see the question on the, it's on uh, the chat that you said. Yes. Uh, was there widespread use of Capella model querying? Yes. Um, Actually, there is a very widespread, and the, the first it's uh, the one I talked about during uh, like the part about recommended engineering. Uh, I think that the first uh, Capella model querying it was uh, with the, the, the M2 doc and the, gener the generation of uh, Word documents. And actually, uh, yeah, Samuel, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like a, a M2 doc, a, a Word document uh, using M2 doc, it's it's uh, only uh, making requests on the Capella model to display. Uh, list of elements to display uh, components that are yeah specific uh, specific queries on the model. So I think that uh, yeah we extensively use uh, M2 Doc um, and uh, yeah I think that can be my answer for for this question. Yes, yes, and, and I saw on some some of the company uh, uh, customize some validation rules. Or, or develop some specific extension to, to query the model. Uh, but uh, yes, probably a, a, a very first and easy step is to is to use a document generation to, to query the model. So, so yeah. next, next question. Uh, um, what is the modeling architecture? Uh, is it one 
single model, uh, one model per subsystem, and so on and so on. So this is um, one single model, uh, one, sig one single model, and uh, how many models for each of the model? There is like one uh, people in charge of this model, and uh, like six around six engineers that can edit on this model. How do they work together? And uh, yeah, as I did, this was a slide about the three stakeholders, and there are also lots of external partners that do not directly edit the models. But they, that uh, pass through a uh, city filter and uh, the yeah, one city system engineer C filter, so we can keep track and we can keep uh, consistency of the of the information. Um, how do they work together? So we use the the embedded Git tool, uh, yeah, directly embedded in Capella. So everyone on its uh, on its uh, computer has a local version of the model, and there is one remote. Uh, repository where there is uh, the, the official version and anyone can uh, push information on the on the remote repository or uh, or take back and synchronize uh, and so there are so so this has been already uh, implemented on that uh, but uh, yeah we we have made the choice not to use uh, we were discussing at the beginning to use uh, team for capella that was uh, yeah also in that shows, maybe it would have been more simple to use that, but uh, actually we were quite good with uh, the Git embedded tool, so 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 we stay we keep it that way. Maybe uh, maybe uh, in the future we'll, we will pass to to Team for Capella, but uh, that is something that we are we are looking at uh, currently. Okay, thanks, Julia. Next question. Uh, not sure you will have an answer, but I will ask anyway. Uh, Regarding the link between capital and simulation, have you any idea on how to achieve this? Um, okay, regarding capella and simulation. Yeah, uh, actually, our, our first approach, it will be um, the, uh, as a, it, a little for so it has a little also for the, the last question. It was the fact that we 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 have a high level uh, model in the sense that we don't have the detail of every component. We what we want also to have is the thirty five subsystem, a preliminary architecture of those thirty five subsystem. There are those others that are more detailed because uh, we are considering them and we use uh, going detail. But uh, this is very heterogeneous. So we have already simulation that we have to make at uh, high higher level. Uh, and um, yeah, those simulations, they, they can be both, uh, they, yeah, I, I'm thinking about a, something in particular, it's a fact to uh, be able to simulate through a mod and stake machine or with the help of scenario, uh, maybe concept of the concept of operation, having a, you know, you clear uh, exploration of the of the states of, uh, of your, your mod and stake machines. Um, yeah, on that, uh, we are, we are Still working, we are experimenting actually for the moment. We, why we didn't go that further in, in this is because, um, yeah, we, we, we didn't really feel the, the need for the moment to go in that. But we, we know that uh, the more we are using, the more it's coming, uh, it's interfacing our activities. And we know that at one moment we will, uh, we will uh, like mine, mine the gap between those two. Um, but uh, I have seen that there has been a, a webinar recently, I think it's last year, about, uh, about a Chinese company that has uh, performed uh, already a like, link yeah. between, uh, yeah, right. I think yeah. it was, uh, was Simulink or something like that, Simulink and, uh, and Capella? Uh, not really, it's uh, their own Simulation engine. Okay. But, but well, if people are interested in this topic, they can have a look at this webinar. And, and maybe to complete this answer, um, I'm aware in the capital ecosystem of uh, a few initiatives to uh, create uh, tools or connector to improve simulation feature. Or maybe, maybe not uh, uh, to support simulation in capital, but probably more something like uh, creating a link between capital and dedicated simulation tool. I I cannot say much more for now, but probably in the forthcoming month, uh, new tools or connector will, will arrive on the market. Um, okay, next, uh, next 
question. I can take actually there are some questions in the chat. For instance, I see one about uh, requirement management. Uh, about the fact, uh, how did you? Uh, and I lost it. Obviously, uh, yeah, about, yeah uh, integrated requirement development and this project where you are employing Capella to develop new requirements, find gap in existing requirements. So, actually, the the, the way we we did that is we did that. It's um, yeah, uh, for for the first phase of the, the global design, we were uh, like a platform. We were at the pivot at the center of all partners. Uh, inputs. So there are partners that give us input about market analysis, other about high level requirements, so other about their own subsystem design. And so uh, we had a detailed list of uh, high level requirements. We ensure obviously consistency between uh, like uh, those, the, 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 the different layers. But um, yeah, high level requirements they were defined, and our job was mainly to use these uh, high level requirements to detail them to subsystem requirements. You know, you, you pass from uh, uh, I want uh, my, my payload to go uh, at uh, that speed to uh, I want my motor to, to have that that thrust. You know, it's uh, like uh, detailing one high level requirement to uh, to uh, uh, subsystem requirements. Then there is another thing: it's the, the the approach that we have. We have a, a yeah a process at CT uh, mainly based on the, what we, we learned uh, using value analysis. Which is uh, using extensively life cycle actor identification and transversal functional analysis. And from this approach, there are lots of requirements that uh, that uh, came simply, uh, for instance, to 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 put metrics on your function to characterize your function, but also the constraints that that are coming. Um, so yeah, we use the requirement viewpoint to 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 model to create those requirements. And the last approach, it's uh, just uh, yeah, having uh, experienced partners that uh, know uh, what will be the requirements of the subsystem. They, they do not know it. Uh, uh, they don't have the, the curates at the very beginning, but that they can build with us. We, we extensively use uh, iteration exchange between our partners and us to create and detail uh, those, uh, those requirements. Okay, thanks. Um, I will pick questions from the Q and A panel. Uh, have you tested the filtering add-on to manage alternatives? To manage, uh, sorry. To manage uh, the alternative. Seems you had issue to to create uh, uh, vi variants in your in your project. And so the mm -hmm. proposition to use the filtering add-on in this way. Yeah, on a, it's a, yeah, variant. Ah, it's a pure variant. Okay. Um, no, it's, well, actually, the question was about the filtering add-on, but yes, probably the proof of character could also be a, a solution. Actually, as I said, it's something that uh, we have tested nothing on that for the moment. We know that it was a limit of our approach, but uh, we didn't have time to 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 go deeper in that in that. We know that for the moment. Uh, when we tested that on uh, on the, the R&D subsystem that I presented at the beginning, uh, that it was very difficult to have several model models to compare. Uh, we tried something. We tried with Git to create different branch and to to be able to com to, to to compare different system, but it was uh, very difficult. We didn't try any commercial uh, add-on, and uh, the one with the question, I guess that maybe maybe had uh, something. Uh, Already developed. I, I think uh, if you can uh, send me a mail after after the webinar to discuss that topic, it will be uh, very very interesting. Yeah, we are looking for for that. Actually, don't have enough. <laughs> we didn't have enough time for the moment to have a, a clear view on uh, on what is uh, on yeah. the market. Okay, and to be really clear, the uh, viability add-on is, is an open source one. But yes, I can provide you with with details. Uh, another question: uh, Did you have uh, any issue with uh, merging models in Git, or uh, did you use branch? We had a lot of issues at the, at the beginning, and uh, that's why we were very happy to test it uh, like uh, two or three years ago. Um, yeah, for instance, uh, if I remember well, uh, yeah, we had a lot of issues, for instance, to have just the rebase uh, function to, to work. Uh, on the on the merging, we had some time also where is the, the 
yeah, the, 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 the transition, the, the merging didn't perform very well. So yeah, we had become accustomed at the beginning to like do your merging, then go back, see uh, see why it has been wrong, do it again, and then it, it magically worked. But as uh, we've practiced actually, uh, we resolved the main of our, of our issue. I have now, I have, the, yeah, I, I can't even remember the last time that we had a real uh, merging problem. I think that uh, we had a lot at the, at the beginning, but yeah, there are some uh, processes. Uh, I'd say that not processes, but uh, there are some tricks that you, that you catch uh, that you catch. Uh, yeah. And the first one, obviously, it's when you pull or when you merge, you close <laughs> close your project. That's the first uh, the first uh, trick to catch. And then yeah, probably, again, uh, good, probably it's very really good advice. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, and an interesting question um, to to work with other teams. Uh, it seems you uh, are highly using m 2 Dirk, but uh, do you perform co-engineering sessions or yeah, that was you a... review only m 2 Dirk documents? So that was a, a point. It's the fact that, um, like, we we had uh, we we used Capella at the beginning of co-engineering session, saying, okay, that now the state of our design, that now the, the external actors that are here, that is uh, where we are. Then we perform the creative session without Capella because, uh, yeah, we just uh, find it uh, not, um, I don't know, when we tried it was not uh, as ergonomic as it's, I don't know why, but uh, using Capella in live with a lot of people, it, it's, uh, I don't know how to say that, but it's not very uh, ergonomic. Maybe it's the way we use it, I don't know. And so, uh, so we didn't use it uh, during the session, we use it at the beginning of the session and then uh, as a, like a minute of missing saying, okay, so that was the design that we had at the beginning. That is the design that we have now. And also it allows us at the, the end of the creative session or the, or the co-engineering session to have, uh, you know, a clear view of the impact of the new design change. Okay, so did I manage all my function? Um, did I manage all my interfaces? So that were more analysis a posteriori, but uh, yeah, we, we for the moment we didn't have uh, like live live co engineering sessions and actually I don't know Samuel if you if you know the, if there are lots of companies that do that uh, for us it is like very difficult to, to do that uh, in live. <laughs> yes, they have their own let's say uh, good good practices and, and recipes. Um, so there, there is no uh, unique way to do that, uh, and some of them focus on on using uh, the model itself. Some others focus on preparing the, the session by generating specific documents and so on and so on. So, mm -hmm. so there's several ways to, to, to deal with it. Yeah, actually for us, the, the, the fact it was not preparing the, the session, it was more the fact that, you know, there was always a, a little friction, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, sometimes you put a, a component at a place, but uh, it's like one centimeter left, so you, you put it at the wrong place. And so we have the feeling that on creative session and co-engineering session, what people want, they, they want to be quick. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I, will, I know why, because it's the fact that you, when you are in a creative state of mind, you are a little, you know, yeah, you are not happy, but you are in a, yeah, in a, in a mood where everything uh, wants to, to be quick. And so Capella, uh, for that, sometimes it can be a break for, for those creativity. And that's why maybe, you, that's what we're experiencing. So, so yeah, this is the yeah. good friction. That, that, that's probably why uh, many of them, uh, which focus during the session on uh, discuss the current design and uh, will catch some comments or, 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 or future modification. Mm -hmm. And we'll report those modification uh, in a second time later on the, in the model. But yeah, that's, that's uh, what we do. Won't won't mix, discuss uh, a specific version, and modify modify the model. Yeah, that's a little what we do uh, on on our side. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we we are reaching the the end of this uh, of this session, fortunately. Um, I had to skip a, a lot of questions. I'm really sorry for. Uh, uh, yeah, somebody who, who has something and who won't be able to answer. Uh, I'm sure, anyways, that Julian will be pleased to provide you with additional information. Mm -hmm. uh, so feel free to, to contact uh, to him or, or me if you require. Um, and yes, 
once again. It was quite interesting, Julian. Thanks for your time and thanks for, for sharing with us. Yeah, thank you, Samuel, for the invitation. Thank you, Leo. And uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. You're welcome. And it's time to close. Have a good day. Bye.